Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Paper Sorcerer. Paper Sorcerer is a straight up old style RPG, guys, with some puzzles here and there throughout the game. It was released on Steam November 2013, and it was developed by Jesse Gallagher and published by Ultra Runaway Games. You can go ahead and pick up Paper Sorcerer for $4.99. That's quite a steal. Paper Sorcerer puts you in the role of the bad guy, the big cheese, the head honcho, the chief. The Sauron, if you will. <laughs> then one day some heroes come out and bust up your shit and zap you into a magical book, and bam, you're stuck in a magical prison. Hence, Paper Sorcerer. Your job is to set yourself free. Now, I like this game. It's different. The art style reminds me of the inside of the old first and second edition D&D &D books, if you ever played D&D &D and you're old like me. Uh, but the game is, is very interesting. It has a kind of a turn-based tactical RPG. It's very reminiscent of old-style games. And that's where it kind of excels at. Anyways, let's get into the game. The, uh, the intro basically explains everything I just told you. You escape your cell with the help of a mouse, which, you know, probably is bad juju. I mean, really, talking mouse. That thing is probably the devil in disguise. I'm going to go ahead and load up one of my older game saves. This is about an hour into the game. Um, and I'm actually about to face my first boss-esque character. Now, before I get too far into this, I want to kind of show you some uh, basic stuff here. This is my party. Kind of, the, I kind of picked a basic layout. Kind of what I thought would be a, uh, a safe layout to start with. And you, in this game, it's Paper Sorcerer, you're the bad guy. It's a sorcerer right there. And you, uh, your party members are actually minions that serve you. They're not like characters that you find throughout your journey who are quirky and interesting. Or all. I mean, the characters are interesting. What I'm trying to say is that the, you, these guys are your bitches, essentially. <laughs> they are your guys. They do what you tell them to do. You summon them into existence, and they fight for you. So I chose the Minotaur. He's like a big, beefy, axe-wielding psychopath. Then I have the witch, who's kind of like my healer. And then to round it all off, I thought I'd pick a sniveling little guy I could kick around who is like my thief, and he's a goblin. And he basically can sneak attack people, can pick locks, and um, will steal items from enemies when we're in combat. Uh, what you're basically looking at here is just the basic menu. You have items. You, all you, you can imagine all your... Uh, standard RPG stuff, your equipment. Everyone has different kind of equipment that they can use. Uh, skills, uh, basically all very depending on your class by characters. Obviously, like caster, you can cast Black Bolt, Focus, Frostfall. Uh, Minotaur has more physical attacks that are based off of his uh, his strength. The witch is the healer, and like I said, the goblin's the rogue. My party layout is well, not, not even that the most interesting. I just wanted to give you kind of a basic idea of the game. What I like about this game, which is really interesting about this game, as monsters being your party members, is that if you come over here, you can actually kind of see the different party members that you can have. You can have a goblin, a cultist, an imp, a minotaur, a troll, a shadow, a skeleton, an abomination, werewolf, vampire, witch, and a ghost. That is a shitload of party. Oh, there's also, actually there's even more. I think there's like a vampire. There's more than just this, actually. There's even more than just what's listed here on this list. Uh, that's... Well, there are vampires listed right there. Um, but you get the end. There's, there's a lot of different kind of party members with different kinds of abilities and different kinds of items that they wear. And they all bring diff something different to the game, something different to the table. And I don't know if I'm going to get... The, see, there's a, like an ability to summon them. So I may actually be able to get more party members as I get deeper into the game. I'm not really quite sure. Uh, but yeah, basically have skills. You they basically the whole shebang there. We'll go ahead and look at. Let's see, save load. Uh, there's, you can. Uh, there's an info screen basically that kind of gives you information about all the games and all that. But enough of that. Let's get around to the actual game. Like I said, this is Paper Sorcerer. Everything is obviously kind of stylized. And it's really, really well awesome looking to be honest with you. And you kind of move around this first person view. And this is kind of the area that I'm in right now, which is very, very awesome and kind of neat and gorgeous looking. I'm very curious how I get to those doors. I want to get to them quickly. I want to pull this lever here. This brings up this platform here. And we'll head down here. I guess this is like ye old medieval la uh, elevator system. And like I said, we're on our way to face the first boss. Uh, and the first boss is kind of represented by this black 
blob stuff. Uh, I guess you could say kind of like almost ink on the paper, but this is kind of the representation of the enemy. You basically see these, you know that you're gonna get into a fight. You're not always gonna see these. Sometimes these are hidden. Um, they can just sneak up on you, or you could you just won't see them and you'll run into them by accident. But yeah, let's get into the combat system. The combat system is very tactical. Uh, every kind of, sometimes characters have like these art schemes. And this is why I said it reminds me of D&D. This is just awesome looking, these art captions and pictures. Uh, the game does have a story, of course, which I'm not going to go ahead and read to you right now, because I feel like the, the focus of this game is kind of the combat. The story is pretty neat and it's interesting, and I'm, I'm curious to see where it all goes, but for the most part, the the big deal here is the combat. So, of course, everything has an energy use, and my character, paper, my sorcerer only has four energy. Energy regenerates one point every turn, so you got to be careful how you manage your energy throughout the battle you could actually expend yourself very quickly or you could you know expend your you know you have to be tactical the way you use your energy is what i'm trying to say to the left of that is a die which basically represents how many turns it takes for that spell to refresh itself so for instance if i use frostfall it'll take me two turns to cast that spell again but that's okay because it pretty much blows through all of my energy anyways so we'll just start off the uh, battle using black bolt uh the controls are pretty simplistic you can use your keyboard uh, for combat mostly, that's what I usually do. Uh, and then for um, for when you're outside of battle, I use the keyboard mouse type of scenario. The controls are pretty simplistic, very smooth, they're nothing really that complicated to say the least. Uh, this is my, my witch, she has several spells she can heal, and she also has phantom grasp, which is kind of like a light damage ice spell. Actually, you know what, I'm going to just have her just attack, because uh, every character, and if you look down here on the bottom, the characters all have this this thing called defense. And basically, defense kind of protects your character until it is used up. And this, oh my god, what a way to start the battle! Thanks, dude. Really? Uh, I want to get my ass kicked on camera, knight. Every character has a defense. I guess you could say number. My witch has a twelve defense. My minotaur has a twelve. I have a six. And you have to kind of blow through that defense before you can actually start dealing quite a bit of damage to your enemy. So, I didn't want to use all of my major attacks to start because I need to blow through this guy's defense first. Uh, but I also need to heal my poor goblin who has just gotten his ass handed to him already in the first attack. I'm going to actually have him use... Oh, this isn't my goblin. Oh, did I already go through my goblin? Gosh dang it. That's it. I think the combat... Uh, the, the rotation changes up on you. One character may go second, one character may go last. It all changes up as far as how everything goes. Ow. Dick. But yeah, graphically the game's kind of cool. What I like about the game is when you do attack, you kind of get to see your characters doing the attack. It does at least give the character a little bit of, um, I guess you could say life. It makes them feel like they're at least doing something. They're actually there. And I kind of like that. So I'm going to use Stealth there. And we've been wailing on him for a while now, so I'm going to go ahead and use Brutal Strike on his ass, and that should hopefully... well, bring his defense to an end. Uh, I'm going to have, have my Witch cast a quick heal in my direction. Which she's going to go ahead and use on herself afterwards. Hopefully my Goblin will be able to dodge some of his attacks. I sure would like him to start attacking my Minotaur, who has 81 hit points. It's kind of my beefy tank of a character, if you will. Alright. So far, we're sitting in a pretty good position. We're not doing too bad. I'm going to try to use um, Trick Attack. See if that can hopefully stun him. He's used all of his energy, which, like I said, regenerates one per turn. And this also kind of brings up a tactical aspect to things outside of combat, because if you blow your energy in one battle and enter into a battle with no energy, you're going to be kind of in a bad position. So you need to be smart in how you use your energy from battle to battle, especially before you face a boss. All right, what do we got going on here? Uh, probably throw, a, you know, let's just go ahead and phantom grasp his ass. Phantom grasp his ass. That doesn't sound right at all. We're gonna go ahead and use uh, focus here on my sorcerer so we can get some energy back. As you can see, basically, his defense is kind of keeping him up quite a bit. Oh my god, that hit hurt. I probably wanted to cast a heal on my sorcerer. I may regret 
not casting that heal on my sorcerer. We'll see though. Hopefully I don't regret it. We shall see. Uh, his attacks are all done. All I can really do at this point is kind of basically attack. I also have items I can fall back on if need be. I have some healing potions and like these items here that they're called restoration crystals and they kind of are like like items that resurrect your party members is the best way to describe them. Alright, I'm going to try to heal my sorcerer here. Hopefully I get that heal off and the knight isn't a dick and attacks him. Or maybe the knight will die, which will be nice. All in all, like I said, the graphics are pretty neat. I enjoy that. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yep, there was the sorcerer. And that's a wasted heal. Ah, oh, ball sacks. Uh, of course. Okay. So we're going to have to go ahead and blow a restoration crystal. That's okay, though. It's This is the beginning of the game. There are probably plenty of more of those came from anyways. I'm going to steal from that bastard. Uh, I want to get my sorcerer back up if at all possible before we end this battle. I can't. Last time I beat this guy, no problem. Of course, this time when I'm filming, he has to be kicking my ass. <coughs> You stupid goblin. Why, Ayana? <laughs> Alright, you know what? Everyone just all out attack this guy. Come on. Black Bolt. Minotaur. Brutal strike his butt. You got nothing. You suck, goblin. You failed me. <laughs> like I guess I enjoy the art style that just the. The seeing the enemies kind of casting their spells and using their abilities between um, gives the characters life. It doesn't, it's just they're not lifeless, they're square boxes doing random points of damage. You actually get to see them somewhat in action. I kind of like that a lot. Thank God he's dead. We almost lost our witch, but we did not, thank goodness. So, uh, leather helmet, some, got some experience. Every time you level up, you, of course, get a, some, some skill points, and sometimes you get new skills, like my mentor just got Blood Rage. My witch just got bait, my goblin got smoke bomb, and I didn't get crap. So there we go, we beat our first boss, guys, and that's just a quick, nitty gritty example of the combat system. And like I said, we kind of are stuck with the energy that we are left with, so when, when we beat that boss, he had zero energy, I had one, she had two, he had one. I'm not sure if we can... Yeah, we can't use focus. Can we? Let me see. Skills. Uh, which can you use focus? No, you cannot. So basically, we'd be kind of stuck in a situation where we'd have no energy at this point and have to wait for the next battle to try to regain some energy. And we'd kind of be in a shitty position if there were more enemies. Thank goodness for us, though, uh, there is not a enemy after this one. There's this giant pit here. And by the way, you'll find treasure kind of throughout the environment. You'll find items and uh, there, like I said, there's puzzles throughout the game. I haven't run into any yet. It's about only an hour into the game. Uh, so I take everything I say with a, kind of a grain of salt. There could be quite a bit of puzzles in this game. Uh, there's a lot of items to interact with and some things to, inter uh, to screw around with. I'm jumping into this pit because this is going to lead me to kind of a, a, the next part of the area, the sanctuary. And I was told to come here by a goblin dude. Again, this is all story stuff. This chick is a representation. She is a physical manifestation of the book. The book itself doesn't want to be the book anymore. It's kind of tired of being used in its fashion. And it's trying to help my character escape. It's actually going to teach me a spell to start breaking bindings of the book, I guess you could say, that are located throughout the book itself. I'm not going to read all this because, again, it's more just story stuff. If, if you want to learn, read that stuff, go ahead and pick up the game. I highly suggest you do that. But I want to show you this. This is the sanctuary, kind of the town. The area that you will come to to sell items, get items throughout the game. It will go into the merchants. When you enter the shop, you're allowed greeting, metal, metallic voice in your head, buy something mortal and waste not my time. Again, we're the bad guys, which I think is hilarious. Right here, sale. I think that's freaking hilarious looking. Just the art style is kind of quirky and very strange. We're the bad guys, but we're bad guys who are working together. I think that's kind of nice. And you can buy an assortment of items and with for these items called gems, which kind of give you the ability to look outside the book, which is why they're kind of valued and traded for. So you can buy different kinds of items, equip your party members as you see fit, armors, accessories, shields, and usable, of course, usable items like potions and restoration crystals. Um, 
let's see what else. We could go there. Of course, there's a merchant. We have, we could talk to some random people around the area. Goblins, evil beings of sorts, water demons, of course. All beings who probably have worked for me at some point. <laughs> and then, of course, we come to our room. In your room, you really, uh, there's not much else to do in this room other than kind of just come over to your bed, rest, which, of course, thank God, uh, restores all of our, uh, attributes all of our health, all of our energy, and we can leave our room and go back to our adventuring ways, basically. Strange old house. Uh, the Strange Old House has this very interesting character, kind of a, a, a side quest, if you will, side thing you could do. Uh, in one of the areas, I found like kind of like this glowing spirit. And if you bring these spirits to this guy, he will actually reward you. They're kind of, I don't know, I would almost say they're kind of hidden. If you find them, you will get access to these things called the catacombs, which are almost like this puzzle. They're like a maze, which I kind of, I went in there for a little while, and they're like a maze. But they also have a like loot and they can enhance your powers. And it's kind of like a bonus thing. It's kind of a nice thing to have as a side thing to do there. If you're not in the mood just to do the straight up uh the the, the straight straight story and head into the next area, I guess you could say. This character is a trainer. He can also basically help you increase one of your characters. Like for instance, the sorcerer, you can increase his health, his agility, his magic, his energy control, what have you. He gives you the ability to upgrade that for gems. Again, more customization for your characters and your party members. You can upgrade them how you see fit. I think that's pretty dope all in all. It gives you the ability to create a party whatever way you like. So once you go through all the sanctuary, you're like, oh, that's all very nice. Well, you go here to the map and this brings you to the overall look, I guess you could say the cell blocks of the game. Uh, I think the game is pretty vast all in all. Um, I don't know if there's really anything to visiting the first areas that you've been through. Uh, for I, You can go through the first cell block again, and I can show you that, but there's really nothing there to see. You can go through old areas again, but as far as I can tell, there really is no benefit to doing so. I don't know if this is true later on. I don't know if there's random encounters, but for the most part, going through the first cell block is pointless. It could be different for our cell block two and later on in the game. But yeah, graphics are awesome. They're all very stylized. This is just kind of the normal. Uh, this is Cell Block 2. This is kind of furthering the storyline. You can go ahead. There's an item the chick gave me. Um, where is it? It is the Gem of Recall that returns you right back to the Sanctuary. If you wanted to go back there, go into the Catacombs. Or you can just go right through here and it'll take you back there. But yeah, for the most part, this is just kind of the normal areas. This is just the normal game itself. You kind of, oh, look at that. That's a bad guy. I want to avoid that if at all possible. You don't exactly have to go through the normal path. Every area, I, 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 and take this with a grain of salt, is somewhat linear. Uh, there is an entrance and there is an exit. It's kind of up to you to figure out how to get there. But for the most part, uh, oh, that's another thing. Uh, last time I came through here, there was actually different kinds of loot. So loot seems to be randomized too, which is kind of neat. Uh, one playthrough might get you something different from another. But for the most part, like I said, just it, every area kind of has an entrance and an exit. Uh, this could be different. What is all this? This could be different later on. Um, but for the most part, it just seems like there's just an exit. There's an entrance and an exit. Find your way from A to B and, you know, c call it a day. Like I said, it it might not be this way later on. The different areas could lead to different exits in different areas. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, with basically with the different party combinations, guys. Oh, I just got no fight. Oh well, that's okay. I'm pretty sure we can take these guys on anyways. Uh, I didn't upgrade my party, but you know. Oh well. Uh, we're going to want to go ahead and use bait on my Minotaur. And we're going to go ahead and cast uh, that on a Squire. And you're going to go ahead and use... Hits all your foes. Go for it. I'm probably expending quite a bit of energy in this battle. and probably not a very smart thing to do. But, you know, I want to uh, get through this battle as quickly as possible. 
All in all, Paper Sorcerer is a really good, solid game, guys. I think it's really fun. The art style is very unique. It's really awesome. The combat system is very tactical. You have to be play it smart. You can get overwhelmed very quickly if you're not careful. And also, there's just different kinds of party members, which I really, really like. No one playthrough is exactly the same. Let me kill this guy here. And then I will go ahead and end this video. Die, you stupid dwarven fighter. Die, die, die. D would you please die? Would you die kindly, sir? Alright, let's just go ahead and just attack. He should be, he should be dead at the end of these attacks. You're dead, come on. You're, you're dead, dude. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. If you live through these attacks, you are truly a mighty dwarf. Holy crap, he might live through these attacks. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I got some helmet, got a healing potion, and some stuff. And I leveled up and got a new Scorch ability. But there you have it, guys. What I like about Paper Sorcerer, like I said before, is it's endless permutations with party members that can bring different abilities, spells, and skills into a very tactical combat system. And what I also like about the game is that it, is, it feels like very much so like an old-school RPG and you can get lost in it for hours on end. Also, the game is very well put together, and I think that in all it accomplishes exactly what it's set out to do, and it's a great game, guys. It's only five bucks. What do you have to lose from getting it, guys? Big thanks to Jesse Gallagher for a chance to play, review this game. As always, like, subscribe, share for future IndieView videos, and this has been Let's Play Paper Sorcerer.